we can beat the rest of the Warriors. Midwest needs to step up the game. I think it's all in good fun, but they're serious competitors. Mr. Tweedy, you could be in trouble. The jury's still out. Randy is a bully, and there's no question about that. This segment of Corn Warriors is brought to you in part by John Deere, where nothing runs like a deer. We are live again, just west of Sherwood Forest, President John Tyler's place. So not only do we know how to grow corn here, but we've had two presidents that lived in Charles City County. I just need to get Gene to be a little bit quieter. He's got to put a better muffler on that helicopter. Well, we got Gene coming in again. Let's make sure he lands. Watch him land on that little pad there. They talk about a jet landing on an aircraft carrier. How'd you like to be the guy trying to land on a little four by four, eight by eight square pad? You know, John's there filling them up, making sure we get all the right mixtures of the products. Boy, it doesn't take long. When you're doing 40 gallons at a time, yeah, you better be able to have a fast pit crew because we're going to do the first one there at Sherwood Forest next. How many acres total are those? Well, 75 at the first one, 360 at the second one. Or I have to come back to get that last bit. Well, I can bring a tote if you, you got a stinger, don't you? Yeah, I got a stinger, or you can just hook it up to my back, and I got to, I can pull it off. You can, yeah, suck it out. Yes, sir. So that'll save you from coming back. That's fine. That'll work great. Yeah. The guy from Georgia talks about chicken litter and piling it up. He's calling it the hula pile. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I got a pile for him. So you're gonna go to the next farm? Okay. All right, I'm gonna win. Yeah. No. I'm just hanging on, man. Saw some decent corn, saw some corn that looked like a hula pile. But I think there's there's a lot of people gunning for the Corn Warrior title this year. And I think most growers, you know, they've had some struggles. I talked with Cobb not long ago, and he had a bunch of rain again. I was with Dan Lickus the other day, and you know he's had his struggles. And Matt, you know, Matt seems to be the one that's had things going smooth. And then Randy and I talked, and you know he's had just an abundant amount of rainfall. You know, I don't want to rule any of them out because I know they got sweet spot somewhere. It seems like when I talk to a lot of people and people call me and they say, hey, I'm stuck here. For the most part, it's that they're stuck on finishing the crop. They do everything up front and then it's like the fourth quarter comes and they're coasting. They're just almost playing defensive. There's still an opportunity for a lot of bushels to be had. For the most part, with what we got Gene doing, we're going to see anywhere from 18 to 40 some bushel yield increase. And that's not coming from more plants. That's not coming from more rows around because we've already fixed that. Now we're just trying to make them longer and make them heavy. So you got Gene right behind me. He's coming in. He's going to add some fertilizer. He's going to add some 
fulvic and humic acids, some PGR, some micronutrients, and then we're adding the fungicide and the insecticide. So we're doing all that, not only to be offensive, but now we're also being protective. If you missed it this year, you know what? There's 2019. If you're at this stage where you can still go ahead and make some applications, just do a few strips to see what potential is there. He's getting ready to do another application there. Because we're going to pick up bushels here. Because we want to be a returning champion. Last year, the average U.S. corn yield was 176 bushels per acre. What was the average yield in 1906? When each new day begins, we're here. When you want new technology that's tested and proven, we're here. When you need a sounding board or just a good story, we're here. For an ally whose local roots run as deep as yours, or to make next year the best year yet, we'll be where we've been all along. With you from the word go. See, we got some corn hair wearing problems. This is stink bug damage. You know, this is what we try to prevent. This is not my first rodeo. Dan kind of rubbed it in my face a little bit that I lost to Dave Hulis by like 120 bushels. I guess him and Swanson, they probably didn't do very well in math because it was more like 140 bushels. It's like 140 bushels for the record. All fun and game. We'll see what you got. Are you looking for an exciting career in the trucking and transportation industry? CDLboards.com is the premier website for connecting the next generation of skilled Class A truck drivers with jobs. With competitive compensation, benefits, and bonuses, CDL Boards connects you with the top trucking agencies in the U.S. Thousands of full-time and part-time positions are available nationwide with new listings added every day. Take control of your future today and let CDL Boards put you on the road to success. Answer, 31 bushels per acre. The same year an aerial application was done for the first time using a hot air balloon. We're gonna do a bunch of different things today. First off, we're making a batch of our compost tea and we're taking that down to one of the pivots and to our, our drip irrigation system. And we're gonna start injecting that and uh, putting it out over the crop. After that, we're gonna do a bunch of mixing for some final applications on corn and soybeans. We've got a lot of different things to mix up, uh, different nutrient levels that we're gonna try to, try to get out there. Uh, after we get them all mixed up, we're actually gonna go out and spray then. And, uh, we're gonna wait till towards evening, so that's the best time to do foliar apps. Uh, we're gonna be running two rigs. My son will be in our big rig, which he'll have uh, spraying the corn. Hopefully he doesn't run any over. I'll be in the small little deer sprayer doing uh, soybeans and uh, doing an application there. This farm, it's what I call Sinisippi 3. It's just because that's from 100 years ago when actually the governor of Illinois owned this farm. It's fertile, but like some of my other farms, it lacked water. And that was our limiting factor. There's times out in this field that we, uh, we got zero. I mean, it zeroed out. I put pivots on it. And now we can pump out 300 bushel corn here. This year we're hoping for more than that, but uh, this has become a very good farm. Last year we didn't get one of the wheels disengaged and it, it bent the whole thing. When we hooked it all up to go again, it, it ended up flipping the whole irrigator over. So that's why we spin the wheels every time we, we flip them, so we know they're disengaged. You gotta sacrifice a little bit of corn, but it's, it's well worth watering it. This is a towable pivot. We move it to two different sections in the field to basically get more area out of one pivot. We move it a couple times a week if we need to when it's dry. We have to chain it down. We have to move our electrical and our water hookups. I'm gonna see if I can get it to move so I ain't gotta run that corn down. Depends whether I can get signal or not. 
higher you get, better reception you get. Okay, if I can get signal. It says it sent it, but it's not responding. We've used choppers and planes in the past, but I've used them enough that it makes me want to use our equipment more just because I see lack of even application across the field. I still think we're doing better of a job than any aerial applicator can do. We're going to start mixing a bunch of products together. We kind of have to try to do it in the right order so we don't screw something up. Ready? Go ahead. You are completely empty, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm out. All right. Go shut that valve again. Now just hold tight a second and put more Keep pumping. Keep pumping. All right, you can get you can get that out of here and go shut it off somewhere. Look in your tank, make sure everything looks copacetic in there. A lot of people will, I wouldn't want to say give up, but they just kind of quit in uh, in the middle of June or at tassel time. Maybe they'll fungicide and that's it. You know, well, there's yield there yet, whether it be water. Possibly, you know, a little more nitrogen. We feel that we keep ramping up our biologicals so the roots can take in more fertility, maybe get some more potash in that's in the soil that will express itself in test weight. Yeah, they're Christensen's. We're sitting here looking at them. Not sure where he's got a freaking gate, but. So can you tell them guys on the radio to try to work them this way? All right, get them. Try to turn them in here. But you guys will have to back off. He's headed this way, Cal's headed this way. Coming fast. He won't hurt you. Try not to let them in there. Where are the rest of them? Okay. Have you ever heard the term the grass is greener on the other side of the fence? Last year, we were first in Illinois in all divisions at uh, 315 bushel. I thought we could do better. This year, we're on a quest for 400 bushel corn. Push the envelope. Do things you haven't done before. Try new things, do yield checks, and research. At the end of the season, running the combine, if you see that monitor pushing over 300 and pumping good corn out, you know you've done your job. For over 65 years, Brandt has been helping growers achieve better results. We bring the very best plant health and fertilizer solutions to the farm. Through research and innovation, we help growers implement new practices that improve the quality and abundance of food, fuel, and fiber around the world. Brandt, professional agriculture. Visit Brandt.co for more information. When each new day begins, we're here. When you want new technology that's tested and proven, we're here. When you need a sounding board or just a good story, we're here. For an ally whose local roots run as deep as yours, or to make next year the best year yet, we'll be where we've been all along, with you from the word go.
Are you looking for an exciting career in the trucking and transportation industry? CDLboards.com is the premier website for connecting the next generation of skilled Class A truck drivers with jobs. With competitive compensation, benefits, and bonuses, CDL Boards connects you with the top trucking agencies in the U.S. Thousands of full-time and part-time positions are available nationwide with new listings added every day. Take control of your future today and let CDL Boards put you on the road to success. This segment of Corn Warriors is brought to you in part by Pioneer. A little bit of heat last couple weeks, so it, GDUs were accumulating extremely fast. You know, we're up close to 1,900 GDUs, so we're clearly well past brown silk. We've had some weather events on some of our irrigated corn where we had some green snap. It didn't matter which company it was. It was corn at a vulnerable state, and boy, that corn's growing. It was growing great, looked good, but when you get one of them 70 plus mile an hour winds with a thunderstorm, it just had some green stuff. You know, we all deal with some kind of weather problem. Maybe it was our turn on some of that corn, not to be as good, but, and don't rule us out because we still got some corn. Yeah, Barley's got a little spot going on himself. He's gonna have a pretty decent opportunity to do pretty well. It's gonna be tough for me to have my son beat me. I don't know if I can handle that one. He was goofing off today. He decided to go bass fishing. We all need to goof off on occasion. I goofed off the other week going to Chicago land and it's my turn to work. Brant, what a great group of folks there. We have some Brant products that we're applying on with the helicopter as well. You think about growing corn and here we think about the success we've had and you know what's led up to that? I've had a great opportunity to surround myself with really good people from the time we plant corn all the way till we finish and harvest the crop. Yeah, I got good family support. I got a great agronomist. I got ear gauge people. I got John Deere folks helping me out. I got Pioneer people helping me out. I got Gene. Just another part of the system that plugs in and that's a person. And it's just that relationship that we have has been very good for our success. Do, 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 do. Where we are today is some dry land, so we'll look at some that was planted later, and then we'll look at some earlier planted stuff, and you know, I think it's gonna be decent corn. So yeah, we'll walk in some field, and one thing that a lot of people don't do, you know, they'll get a crop duster, do some aerial applications, and very few of them go out in the field to check to see what the crop duster's doing. So we're gonna go out there, and I'm even gonna probably pull a plant out so we can see where the product's hitting the leaf, and and I think a lot of growers need to start paying attention to what's happening. They don't need to assume things are being right. They need to verify. We're wanting to see, get an idea what kind of yield potential we got. So we're shucking back. Now we're still pollinating, so on this corn. Getting dry land. So not too bad, I'm gonna take a guess about 16 rows around. Now this is dry land. Now if we were irrigated, I wouldn't be so upset about the number of rows around, but I would surely want it a little bit longer. I'd like to have more rows around, I'd like to have 18 or 20. I don't get hung up as much on rows around. I wanna make sure we got good weight for kernels. This corn's about completely pollinated. So we're just trying to finish this out. We have the potential somewhere to be in that 240 plus bushel range out in this field. And we've had good success. This is also a fine sandy loam soil. But again, we gotta have the good Lord's gotta help us out. In the next 10 days, we'll know whether or not we're losing kernels. And then it's gonna take good temperatures, it's gonna take rainfall. Their biggest enemy right now is lack of rain because this is dry land. So we'll start potentially seeing this corn tip back. A reason for the air applications right now is so we can kind of help be defensive and keep this crop green and healthy as long as it possibly can. So this is this particular hybrid. And then if you notice how the ear's higher here and then we get on these, the ear's a little bit lower. So let's just pull one of these ears and just see if it's got similar potential. Now it's a little further behind it hadn't finished pollinating. 
Well, shoot, this ain't a very pretty ear. We don't, this is not going to pollinate very well, so this one went through some stress. So we're also going to pull the ear right beside it to see what is going on. Until you can see, this particular hybrid has gone through much more stress than this one. You see the lack of pollination there. Spread risk, risk management. Surround yourself with good people so we'll see that you know, maybe this hybrid is not one that's adapted to air environment or it didn't like the stress that we had this particular year. Yeah, yeah this sucks. That's what we think of that hybrid. Yeah, let's get out of this because I'm pissed off at this corn right now. We're going to get a bush hog. When each new day begins, we're here. When you want new technology that's tested and proven, we're here. When you need a sounding board or just a good story, we're here. For an ally whose local roots run as deep as yours, or to make next year the best year yet, we'll be where we've been all along. With you from the word go. We want to finish the crop. You know, we got to stay on top and we got to beat these other corn warriors. So we want to try to make our plants stay healthy and green as long as possible. If we're able to get good weather and finish this crop out, in the next 10 days, we'll know whether or not we're losing kernels. Their biggest enemy right now is lack of rain. For nearly a century, AgriGold has been the choice of corn and soybean growers bold enough to go and grow their own way. AgriGold brings the agronomic recommendations and resources growers expect from a larger seed company combined with a first-hand, in-the-field understanding of the areas we serve. Our global breeding program and local yield results stack up against anyone when it comes to delivering at harvest. It's not luck, it's science. Be bold, go gold. Don't tell Daniel I'm doing this. I'm gonna sneak a peek. This is agrigold corn. It has to be the pioneer. My most important uh, part of my team is Melissa. She does a lot of recommendations and uh, she's always uh, helping us with products and even fertility things, trying to figure out what can go with what. And uh, a lot of the reason this crop looks like this is because of her. It's all about Melissa. First thing we start checking, kind of look at the ear height consistency. And it's nice. And uh, most of them are consistent. Not every one, but the ones, the ones that aren't have thrown two ears, as you can see here. But that ear won't make anything, but it put it on two nodes. So uh, that's a little bit different. But, you know, we check the fatness and... The uh, fatness. The, yeah, the or, girth. Or, the, or better known as the girth. The girth, yes. <laughs> Melissa Rose. likes to call it GER. Not fatness. Because I just wish we weren't getting any tip back. And I, I know we had a little pollination problem that we don't have so much on our little bit later planted stuff just because we missed a week of heat at pollinating time. There's a lot of yield out here. And if you can see our root hairs are basically coming right out of the top of the ground. And some of the stalks, if you look, don't even have brace roots. I don't think we'll have any issues with these stalks. This hybrid has really good stalk strength and root strength. There's no chance it's gonna fall over. And at these populations, that's actually pretty impressive to have um, that girth at 40, you know, 42, 43,000 on the, on the stalks. We're uh, using Farmer's Edge for our weather stations and they're calling for five, six days of, of clouds, partly sunny. Ah, but here comes the sun. David has sunshine, we need sunshine. Do you think that using the compost tea has had any effect on the lack of disease? I guess I'm not sure on that. They, uh, they claim it, it can make for a healthier plant, a stronger, would it be a bacteria or a fungi? You got your good fungi and your, your bad, bad fungi. fungi. <laughs>
and the so good you fun your, guys you want your are, good fun guys are killing to off your bad fun guys. Right. Hopefully that's what's happening. Yeah, that's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> he never says what I want him to say. <laughs> There are more than 70,000 species of fungi, many of which are used in corn production. Fungi can capture water and vital nutrients from far away and deliver them back to the plant roots. In exchange, the fungi receives photosynthetic sugars from the plants. Brad here is trying to make sure all that'll work before we go in the big tank with it. If this was uh, something that was corrosive, I would not be sticking my hand in here, I promise you that. You're going to talk to the corn again? Make sure that, you know, I, I wanted them to give me their all, give me their best, and uh, I think for the most part, they've been really trying. Uh, I've, uh, you know, we've been feeding them, and they've been putting their ear on, and they're, they're, they're doing a pretty good job for me. You know, I'll give, uh, I'm not going to give the team their, uh, their trophy till the end of the year, they got to keep working for me, but uh, for, for right now, I think they're doing pretty good. So keep up the good work, guys. You can really increase your yield by a pretty large percentage just by expanding these kernels and by not giving up on them. So you never give up. Being it's a contest field, we've spent more money on it than we do on our conventional acres. We're hoping there's an extra 50 bushel out here. And at 50 bushel at, I'm gonna say $4, the market's not right at four, but if you can market right, you can get $4. You know, that's 200 bucks an acre. We can surpass our extra cost with the extra bushels if we can get our test weight. We got a hell of a crop, but we gotta finish it. Well, it's been working fine, but the operator got it stuck. Yeah, I wasn't stuck that bad, but I thought I could dig it out. I tried digging it out instead of pulling it out. I just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And it took me two full days to get it out. It was awful. You're dead busy. Uh, it was a beautiful day out. We've been working really hard. So we took 15 minutes, went for a quick little bike ride just to cool off. We did a lot of work, we got a lot done. The film crew's been in the way the whole time and I'm ready to kick them out and get them the hell out of here so I can get back to work. We got one more full year pass to make on the contest corn and then we're basically done for the year so just kind of a wait and see what harvest brings. We are a little short on rain like we have been the last two years. We really need a good soaker. Randy is a bully and there's no question about that. I thought it was interesting in deciding to call the corn belt out considering he's never tried to grow corn in the corn belt. My opinion is what it is. I'm not gonna spend five minutes worrying about what Randy Downey thinks. <laughs>